Hello, everyone. This is Barbara Razdoni, and I am delighted to welcome you to an e-commerce lab presentation about what to expect in social media marketplaces. Wherever you are coming in from throughout the world, I am just so happy you're here. And for me, social media is a passport that can take you around the world. Here's a picture of me at Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. You can see Mario and Luigi were there as well. And I am here because I won a trip sponsored by Nokia to find two social media enthusiasts from the US. All you had to do was write a blog post with 125 words and you were entered into the contest. So my first tip for you is when you see a chance then take it. And the second thing is really think about your social media accounts and your connections as your passport to doing business throughout the world. So what kind of business are you in? For me, I'm in marketing and consulting, which means that I think for people and I help them figure out what steps to take to really connect with their customers, attract attention and build their business. But how about you? Are you in agribusiness, fashion, handmade, tech, tourism, or perhaps you're in the same business I'm in? No matter what your business, the social media marketing places game plan is gonna help you expand and grow. So here's what we're gonna to cover today. First, we're going to talk about trends you need to know about right now. We're going to talk about a four-day framework, which is digital, direct, dynamic, and data. We're going to talk about best practices, best practices for Facebook and Instagram. And we're going to talk about how to drive traffic from social media to your stores. And you'll also be getting a passport to social media marketplaces success guide. So we've got lots of things that we're going to cover today. Let's get started. As a futurist and someone who loves to think about what could happen tomorrow, in fact, back in 2005, I was presenting seminars and workshops on video marketing. And at that time, everyone said, what are you thinking? No one is doing video marketing. But I knew that video marketing was going to be really big someday. Look at us now, huh? So anyway, the three different trends that I picked out for us to focus on are growth, search, and social. So let's talk about growth. One of the things I enjoy doing when I prepare my presentations is to look at statistics. And I found this one astounding. When I looked at what's happening with e-commerce growth, I found that the US e-commerce penetration increased 10 years time in three months in the first quarter of 2020. 10 years and three months, what? Well, a lot of that was due to the pandemic and we're seeing businesses of all types and sizes experiencing a huge push and in innovation, creativity, and connections with customers. Customers are going offline, online, and the world is just coming to connect and, and grow via e-commerce. Now you might be thinking, well, what's happening in my part of the world? Well, here's what's happening in your part of the world. By region, region by region, we can see that retail e-commerce sales grew by about an average of 20% around the world. And it's just going to keep growing from there. So growth is our first trend. The next one is search and search is changing. It's not just typing something into your computer or tapping something into your phone. We're looking at mobile search, which is driven by voice and voice search could be to one of your devices in your home. If you have Alexa or Google home, those are voice search devices, it could be your phone, anything that's hands-free or connected to a device that has search is what voice search is about. People aren't typing, they're talking. And mobile users are actually three times more likely to use voice search. Now, what's gonna happen with voice search and voice commerce? Well, next year, which is only a few months away, voice commerce is projected to be a $40 billion plus business in the United States. And it's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Another search trend that you can look at in the Passport Guide is Google's new trend. And they have come out with a visual search engine that combines text as well. And it's called MUM. That's the acronym M-U-M. That happened last week. It seems like there were a ton of major announcements last week. Technology is like that. Social media is like that. 
You just have to keep your eyes on what's going on. It's got its own news channel and its own development channel and its own innovation channel. There's always something to watch. And here's some really big news from TikTok. They're celebrating 1 billion people, 1 billion. That's a lot of people for something that's just so young and fresh. TikTok is on its way to taking over the world. And when TikTok first emerged, I said, watch it because this platform has the potential to change how we communicate and hasn't it? How many TikTok videos have you had, watched? Even if you can't think of what they were, believe me, TikTok has impacted your life. It's impacted our news cycle. It's impacted products. It's impacted entertainment. It's everywhere. And you don't have to be a teenager to use TikTok. Well, last week, TikTok blew the doors open for e-commerce by launching TikTok World. Yes, they did have partnerships with companies like Shopify to offer shopping, but now they're taking it to a whole nother level. So stay tuned because TikTok for business is going to change the way sales are made. Now, why is TikTok, TikTok so big? You know, I asked myself this question. And I mean, why is it? It's because of your brain. Brains love TikTok. They love TikTok. In fact, brains love images more than they love text. In fact, your brain can process images 60,000 times faster than text. So when you see an image, your brain's like, I got it. If you have to read a book, your brain's like, mm, I don't know, or even an update. So that's why images and videos are so important. And this is a statistical graph from TikTok. What they're saying is a cross-platform comparison across five dimensions of consumers' neural response to content shows that TikTok's approach is 44% better and they in can increase engagement by over 15%. And it's all because of the format. Can TikTok stay in TikTok? No, TikTok goes everywhere. And I like to look at examples from global brands because they have the teams, they have the, the funds to advertise and experiment, and we can learn from their lessons. So this was also from last week, and this is from McDonald's, a, a huge global company. They went to TikTok and they asked a superstar named Emily to give them a new name and a new logo. Emily came up with this great new name, McDodes. And actually, um, it's all lowercase except the O is uppercase. So that's the change. McDonald's said, okay, we're going to go ahead and change our profile picture. So they did that. The results were they got 140,000 likes and 25,000 shares on Facebook, not on TikTok, on Facebook. And so their social media director says the time TikTok was for teens only is long gone. And he is so right. So we looked at trends, we looked at growth, search, and social. And you might be thinking, I want to know even more about trends. So here are a couple of conferences you might want to attend. Amazon Accelerate is coming up. And Shopify Commerce Plus is coming up as well. Now, if you're watching this presentation after those events are over, just keep your eyes out for new conferences. They pop up constantly. And what you want to do is you really want to search for ones that can help you build up your knowledge in areas that you really need help with. So that's really what you want to do. When you sign up for one of these, you don't have to go to every single session. You can pick out the ones that really are going to help you the most. And then one thing I like to do sometimes is go to one that I think I'm not really sure why I want to go, but it kind of sounds interesting. And I may learn more from that one session that was kind of a, a curiosity choice rather than a practical choice. So have fun and plus you'll make new connections. So always look at what you can do and a lot of them are free, they're online. Now we talked about trends and now let's go to the four winds of marketing. And I came up with this concept because I wanted to really simplify marketing strategy for my clients. So I came up with the four wins, the four Ds, which are digital profiles, direct connections, dynamic content and data driven. So. I wish I could spend a lot of time taking you through each one of these, but because we're on a timeline here, we're just gonna just cruise right through and just look at the highlights. So the first one is your digital profiles and your digital profiles are your digital DNA. Everything that people can find about you is what builds your DNA. That's in your profiles and your stores. So it's really important for you to have some consistency here. If you have one description on Etsy that's different than on Facebook, 
you might want to just make sure that they are consistent because what can happen is, and it's okay to, to change them up a little bit, but if they're all different, then you're going to start looking like you're not being cohesive. So we want to make sure that our digital DNA can be recognized across all different platforms. Now, the next D is the direct customer's journey. And this is a flow. You can see it's everything from awareness to consideration to purchase to review. And we're only going to focus on awareness today. But keep in mind that you really need to think about how do your customers find you? Who are they considering besides you and why? When do they purchase? Is the purchase easy? And then do they review your product? Do you ask them to? So walk through your customer's journey and look for areas that you can really shore up and make better. One of the areas you might not think about, and really we're not talking about websites today, we're talking about marketplaces and social media, but your website is really, really important. And this is a way that your customers are really going to judge your credibility. And this is maybe where the whole customer journey happens after awareness. Maybe this is where they do the consideration, purchase and review. So we're going to be talking about Good Karma Ranch. That's our case study today. And this is their website. What I love about it is you choose your experience. And it's really nice because if you come here and you want to do a farm tour or maybe take a yoga class with the alpacas and attend a different kind of event, you've got that choice. Or maybe you want to shop. You can go to the online store. Or maybe you're another alpaca owner and you want to connect there. So this is a really good way to help people direct themselves through their, your website as soon as they arrive. Now, the next one is dynamic content. Just three tips for you here. Be consistent, be clear, and have connection. So consistency. If you have a schedule and you're committed to, to posting every week, three times a week, that really helps you with your, your calendar and just your efforts, your time. So it's good for that. But it's also good because algorithms love consistency. So if you're telling the algorithm, I'm going to post at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, every Tuesday, the algorithm's like, oh, there they are again, and you get rewarded for that. So you want to be consistent with your posting and also your messaging. That is where clarity comes in. Really be clear about what you're selling, you know, or let's say that you have a tourism place and you have a, a tourism, it could be a place, it could be a location, it could be an event of interest, who knows, but you just really need to think about what kind of questions would your buyer or your customer be asking themselves? What are you leaving out and taking for granted, a, granted that they don't really know about? And if they did, they'd be more likely to make a decision to buy. And then the last piece is connections. Every time you post a piece of content, that's an opportunity to make another connection, whether it's a like, a share, a direct message, could be a purchase. But keep in mind, the more connections you have, every time you build up each little one, it adds up to a bigger customer experience. And then with content, it's not just all about what you post. It's yours, mine, and ours. So it's yours that you post. It's mine being your users or the world at large. And ours is what we share together. So content is something that is shareable. Now, the last D is data points. And as a marketer, I just love everything about marketing the creativity, the art, the graphics, the science, the math, the data. It's just a lot of fun to measure your, your success. And so there are different ways you can do that. The first thing you need to do is decide what you want to measure so you can grow. The deciding part is kind of hard. It's easy to get carried away by saying, oh, wow, we had so many people who liked that picture. That's great, but did that really help you grow anything? So think about other things like how many people signed up for your email newsletter list? How many people sent you a direct message? How many people used a coupon code? So really look at data points that are going to help you drive your business. And it's kind of like giving yourself a report card. You're going to keep working on that. You're not going to work on this anymore. And feel free to mix it up and try new things. So those are the four wins, digital, direct, dynamic, and data. Now let's go into best practices for Facebook Marketplace and Instagram shopping. There are some uniform best practices that you can follow. And here they are. Search keywords are super important. What you want to do is think about what keywords people are looking for when they search for you, your product, your destination, your tech. What are they looking for? And keywords can also be hashtags. So you want to have a collection of keywords that are really going to unlock opportunities for you. The next is a detailed description. A lot of times we have so many characters we can put in, but 
people might put in like one or two sentences and that's really not enough. So as much as you can fill up the detailed description with a clear, cohesive, concise and consistent description, that would be fantastic. You can even copy and paste over and over again, but make sure that you've got something that really resonates with people. You want them to be able to read the detailed description, have their questions answered. You can even include a mini Q&A in the detailed description if you know everyone's gonna ask the same question. The next one is pro images. If you have an iPhone or a Galaxy or any kind of a new smartphone, congratulations, you are a professional photographer. The phones today are some of the best cameras in the world. So if you have a phone, you can take great images. If you need some tips on images, look online. There are all kinds of guidelines on how to photograph products. And another tip is ask the people who bought your products for images. Sometimes theirs are gonna be even better than yours, especially if they're in it. And the last part is communicate. So understand that this isn't just a one-way operation. You know, I think about the time I walked into a brick and mortar store in our charming downtown that we used to live in. I, I loved going into that store. I went in one day and I was in there for probably 10 or 15 minutes looking at everything. And I was expecting the owner to say something to me, but they never did. And I, I was on my way out. And the last thing they said to me was, thanks for coming in. Have a good day. Now, it would have been changed a lot if I'd walked in and they would have said, hey, it's so nice to see you. Isn't it a beautiful day? What are you looking for? So really think about yourself as someone who's welcoming and helping people decide, walk them through the buyer's journey. And that will differentiate you from a shop that says, thanks for coming in on the way out. <laughs> Okay, so now let's look at this case study and we're gonna look at Good Karma Ranch. When I search Good Karma Ranch for Facebook, you can see that Facebook gives you a lot of information. You can look at all posts, people, groups, photos, videos, and there's even more, but this is their Facebook shop. And if you click view shop, you go right to the shop. But what I want you to notice is what also came up is a picture or a group of pictures that I took at the ranch when I was visiting. So this is a great example of how user-generated content comes up. I didn't plan this, but thank you, Facebook, and thank you to Good Karma Ranch, who did agree to be part of this presentation. The next thing you can see in Facebook collections at shop is collections. And so we can see that Good Karma Ranch has yarn, other fun things, a lot of different collections. And when you go to look at a collection or you move over in the shop, there's a pop-up that comes up and this pop-up invites you to stay connected. It says, drop your email for farm events and occasional updates and take 15% off your first order. So it's really a good way to grow your business is to have a pop-up like this. And it's also a good way to incentivize people who are shopping for the first time is to give them a discount. Keep in mind that Facebook does have a customer center. And when you look at the customer center, you can send a message, continue shopping, check your payments and orders, and you can read more about the shop. So it's a, a really good online store interface. And then this is an example of the Facebook page. Here's the Good Karma Ranch family, and you can see all the things that they have here. They've got their shop, posts, photos, events, and reviews. They also have a messenger that pops right up when you go to their Facebook page. And Facebook Messenger can be programmed, so you don't have to keep your eye on Facebook constantly. It will let you know when someone's messaging you, but you do want to be responsive. So for instance, if somebody says, what are your payment options, and you get back to them within a minute, then they're much more likely to purchase. Then this is an example of Good Karma Ranch's Facebook, or excuse me, Instagram. <laughs> so many social media sites. Anyway, this is Instagram and you can see this halo effect around their logo means that they have posted a story. Instagram has all kinds of ways to post. You've got posts, stories, reels, IGTV. And uh, here we have their description. They use emojis in their description, which people really like on Instagram. So if you can use emojis, that'd be great. And then they also have Linktree, which will take you over to another page that will show a range of options to go to. So you can send them directly to your store or you can just have a whole list of options. They have highlights here and highlights are a great way if you wanna highlight a collection, you can do that. If you want to showcase visitors, events, you can do that as well. And then this yoga image here is an example of how they 
turn their events into really professional looking invitations. And they use Canva, which is C-A-N-V-A.com, canva.com. Now, another one is Handmade from Central America. This is an Instagram online mall. And when you go to Handmade from Central America, then you go to the link in the bio and you can see all the shops there. It's really, really cool. What we can see here is they're using takeovers and a takeover is when you give your account to someone else to post on your behalf on Instagram. This could, could work really well if you have um, a peer to peer relationship or if you're doing a regional relationship, you can pass around your Instagram, you can grow your account that way. And you can also introduce people to other products and services and places. So how do you grow your Instagram account? What are the best practices? That is something that we could take a long time to cover, but good for us. Instagram will guide you through this as well all of these different platforms and you will find links in your social media marketplaces success guide. And this is Instagram prompting you to get your shop on Instagram ready for holiday season. It is that time. So if you want to start posting things for holidays, I'd start working on it right now. And then if you're thinking, boy, I really would like a more refined Instagram strategy, Instagram's got you. All you need to do is click through this survey and they will give you a strategy and a guide that's gonna help you maximize your business. They also have success stories on all of these platforms. And granted, some of the businesses are really, really big, but they'll give you ideas of what works. And I always like to study what works. So take some time and look at that. And in your passport guide, you will have links to success stories. Now, our last stop is traffic. We're gonna look how to get traffic from social media to your shop so that you can make more sales. And here's some shop tips from Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. Amazon is really a fascinating place. You know, you can have your own brand page. I've even seen people who have live shows. I thought about having one because I thought it would be fun to have a show on Amazon, but I'm not quite sure what to sell yet. But you can do that. If you want to have a show and have a co-host and you have your products on there, you can have like your own TV shopping show, which is really cool. The next is eBay. eBay is an auction place, but it's also a place where you can almost have the equivalent of a brick and mortar store inside your eBay shop. You can sell a lot of different things. And then Etsy, of course, is a wonderful place for handmade artisan products and just beautiful things. I love shopping at Etsy. So what works for them all? Well, we're back to keywords again, and you really want to think about the keywords with uh, all of these, what are, what are people gonna really look for? Etsy in particular is really big on SEO and you do have a link in your passport guide that talks about how to use SEO with Etsy. And you can add a link back to your shop. Just make sure that it's connected somewhere so that people can find their way back to your website and they can really look around more and really get to know who you are and what you do. When I asked Good Karma Ranch what was the most important thing here, they said, call to action. And I couldn't agree more because have you ever gone shopping and you know that you're shopping, but you're really not buying. And that's really what call to action is about. It's about asking people to do something and really prompting them and just really guiding them through the customer experience. So really think about the call to action. Is it to subscribe to, subscribe to the email? Is it to learn more? Is it to buy? But just keep in mind that you're always guiding people to do something. And the last one is to be responsive. So if people are interested in what you have and they ask something, make sure you get back to them. So now let's dive into tips for each one of the platforms. And with Facebook, we're gonna talk about why you need a page, groups, and then Messenger. So on Facebook, if you have a Facebook page, it'll show up in search, which is great. You can promote your products. You can build your audience so that you've got people in Facebook who are supporting you and your shop, whether it's tourism, agribusiness, fashion, and then Facebook groups. So let's say that you have yarn that you wanna sell and you found some big knitting groups on Facebook and there are some really big knitting groups on Facebook. So you could post something in the, in the group. It could be a comment where you promote your products or you, know, you could just be really out there. One way to do this that is going to really get you more attention is if you reach out to the group manager and you say, 
hi, I have some yarn I'd like to offer to your folks. And if you give them a discount or if they want to interview somebody about how organic yarn gets made, they can do an interview with you and that will get you in front of everyone with their endorsement. So that's really the best way to go. But if you can be in a group and answer questions and all of a sudden you become somebody that people trust, that's another way to get people to your shop because all of a sudden they, they recognize you as an expert. This works for people. So if you want to, what I mean by that is your personal profile. And so then that will position you as an expert. And then you can also from your business profile offer discounts. Messenger we looked at before with Good Karma Ranch, but make sure you have it set up and ready to go. The next one is Instagram. You can post images if you want, and you could do a carousel, a lot of different images. Instagram is really a great place for video though. And just back up to Facebook, just for a second, Facebook announced Reels last week and Instagram already offers Reels, which are longer short form videos. Think about that, longer short form videos. Uh, much like TikTok, they can be about three minutes. So with Instagram, you are in the home of hashtags. Instagram loves hashtags. So you need to use hashtags that people will find you for. You don't want to go crazy with hashtags because if you over hashtag your post, it's just going to go into the spam zone. All of these platforms are really good for insights too. So what I love to do is about once a month, look at what's been working and what's not working and then ship that up. Keep in mind though, that Instagram and all these platforms have minds of their own. So you might think something worked once, it may not work twice, but maybe you can get an idea of what would work. You can also look at other accounts that your, your customers are likely to follow and see what's working for them. So on Instagram with video, you can do stories, you can re do reels, you can do IGTV, which is Instagram television. With stories, those are gonna be what we call ephemeral social media. And I remember when that first came out with Snapchat and I had an interview and I had to keep saying ephemeral, ephemeral. <laughs> it's a, a big word, but anyway, it means they disappear. So uh, stories are good on Instagram because they're quick. People know that it's fresh. You can ask people to do things. You can take a poll. They can DM you. They can follow a link. So there's a lot you can do in a short amount of time. Reels and IGTV are longer. And this is a good thing. You can go live when you go live. Instagram will let everyone know that's following you. And you can have a show if you want to. So Instagram offers a lot of potential. The next one is Pinterest. Pinterest is all about visual storytelling. So what you want to have is you want to have vertical pins and you want them to be bright and colorful, kind of like from a catalog. And what I love about Pinterest is it's like you are looking at a really beautiful catalog that you edited yourself. You put it all together. It's all about visual storytelling. And so one tip for you is to think about putting your brand logo or your link on your pins so that people know where they came from and where they can go to. And here's an example of Pinterest. Now, this is from Good Karma Ranch again, uh, 21 followers and four people are following them. So not a big audience. Most places, not much would be going on. But look at this. They have 69,000 monthly views, 69,000 on Pinterest. So Pinterest is a place where you can get your pins together. You can post them. And it's not that you can sit back and relax. You can if you want to. But it's a great place because you can get a collection of images together you can get them ready to go. You can put them all up at once. You could never do that with Instagram. You can't like send out 20 or 200 videos in one day. You could, but you'd probably be locked out. So it's a good place to just get things up and get them going. Now, TikTok, it's all about trends and influencers. If you want to know what's trending anywhere, go to TikTok and look for hashtags. Game day was trending. That's part of the reason I, I called my agenda game day. And Twitter is also good for trends. We're not talking about Twitter, but if you want to see what's trending, you can go over to Twitter. It's in the moment. TikTok is also a great place for influencers. And influencers are people who have a following. Yes, they're major, major influencers. I mean, really, really movie stars, uh, sports celebrities, people like that. But the influencers who are really making their mark are people who have small audiences, even like 1,000 or 500 and if you're thinking, I want to be on TikTok, but I don't know how to do it, TikTok does have a creator marketplace where you can search for influencers who can do videos of your product. So for example, if you're selling hats, you can look for Instagram influencers and well, TikTok, I don't, everything, I'm getting my platforms all rolled up and together, but you can work with an influencer who could probably put you on all the platforms beyond TikTok. 
And so they'll introduce your product to their audience. So it's a great way to get traffic. It, it's going to cost some money. I don't know how much it, it might just be product though. Sometimes they just want products. So just think about what your TikTok experience might be like. And if it's only just to explore what's going on there now, that's okay. At least if you see what's trending, you'll know, and you can bring it back into what you're doing other places. YouTube is our last stop and YouTube is a giant search engine. What uh, people love about YouTube is they like to find things and a couple of ways to help them find them is to have a title that asks a question. And if you're looking for a way to ask a question, you can go to answer the public and they'll suggest questions that you can ask. You can also just type into YouTube what questions, or you can go to Google, type in your topic, and the questions that people asking are asking will pop right up. So use a question as your title, and then YouTube gives you a lot of room in their description, a lot. So you can put in as much as you want. You can talk about what's in the video. You can have a whole bio of you as the owner. You can talk about your company. You can add links, hashtags. You can really fill that up. And I would, because YouTube likes to search for things. And the more you have in there, the better off you are. So to review, that's our social media marketing places game plan. And so we talked about trends and the trends we talked about were growth, search, and social. So we know e-commerce is exploding off the charts. We know that mobile is driving the growth. And we also know that search is changing. So uh, we've got uh, voice search and we've got Google coming up with their new mom, M-U-M. And then on social, we talked about TikTok, also Facebook announced Reels last week. TikTok is now uh, really, really moving into the e-commerce business zone. So it's something to keep your eyes on. The 4D framework we talked about was digital, direct, dynamic, and data. And then best practices for Facebook and Instagram, as well as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. And then we also talked about tips to drive traffic to your sites. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Barbara Rosconi, and I am there with an alpaca. I would like to give a special shout out to Good Karma Ranch. You can find them at goodkarmaranch.com. Thank you so much to Shelly for all of her input. It's been an honor and a pleasure spending time with you today and connect with me on social media. I would love to answer your questions and work with you in any way I can to take your commerce to the next level. Good luck and we'll talk soon. Bye.